All right, here we have a 2012 Dodge Challenger RT. Got the old 5.7 liter Hemi in it. Let me grab some keys here out of my bag. So supposedly the engine's locked up. No, oh, let's pop the hood here. Apparently it ain't got no juice at all because yeah, it's stone dead. Alright. Um Alright, I just grabbed a few tools and the breaker bar. So let's see if we can, uh, I was hoping to check this out here in the parking lot. Yeah, maybe. A little tight down in there. I need to take off that serpentine belt. I might have to get a few more tools to take off this air breather tube here. I don't know. Let me see what I can do. Right, I'm gonna run back up here and get a flathead screwdriver. Just so we can open it up and see what we're doing down in there. Uh, the medium flathead. This one. Yep. Thank you, sir. There's the old uh, 5.0 supercharger. Are you gonna be able to get this down, the engine down in there with all this on there? I think so, yeah. Well, I hope so. I do too. Well, if I, if I remember correctly, all the parts on the floor, I took off the engine when I had it out. This was still on there? No, I had the supercharger off. Yeah, but that's the only part I'm worried about, that supercharger. But I don't know, I, boy, I hope so. With that, uh, uh, I hit that on three. Yeah, you might be able to, but this, uh, you was talking about the, uh, all this. Yeah, I gotta get up over that. Yeah. Yeah. But I got a ways that I can go up with the tranny still. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. All right. Something else. There's that pop-up up there. There we go. There's a little poppity pop needed. Okay, let's see. What it does when I just pull on the belt. Oh, okay, so. Alright. So I don't have to, well, I might not have to remove the belt. Water pump ain't locked up. Idler pulley ain't locked up. Alternator ain't locked up. Tensioner ain't locked up. Only thing I got left is this idler pulley over here. It's not locked up. I can see that. And if I get get down in there and see that, I could prove it. I could prove the uh, air conditioner ain't locked up. If I can get to it. And the air conditioner ain't locked up. So just by simply pulling and pushing on the belts in different spots, I've proved that nothing's locked up on the drivetrain, so I do not need to remove the belt. I got a deep well in the fans right there. I don't know, bro. This might be more of a pain in the butt than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I can't even get the freaking socket in there. All right, so I'm going to run back up there one more time. Or it's 22. There we go. Well, it's not. The engine is not locked up. All right. Oh, my gosh. Maybe I should have just freaking brought a jump box out. 
That'll be silly if it's just a freaking dead battery. But it might be a bad starter. All right, I'm gonna go get my jump box. Getting some exercise today. All right, I got the jump box hooked up. All right, hit it. Oh my, what the freaking heck, bro? I'm out here wasting all my freaking time on freaking, what the? Be, uh, it says right there, customer states, engine will not start due to engine being locked up. Freaking ignorant, bro. Just wasted my time. Well, it needs an engine. <laughs> hey, there we go. <laughs> Stupid ignorant junk. Even brought the hammer out there just in case we had to beat on the starter, but freaking fired right up with the jump box on it. Um, unhook the jump box and see if uh, it dies. No? All right, well, I am going to uh, get this back on here and uh, go drive it a little bit, pull it in the shop, and do alternator test, battery test. So as soon as I got in it and hit the brake pedal, it died on me. So probably got a bad alternator. And it had a check engine light on when I got in it. Well, go, it's gone now. Of course, I got the battery box hooked up. I don't think that'd make a difference. But let's see, where's the charging? It don't even have a freaking, uh, it don't even have a charging gauge. All right, so I'm gonna get it pulled in the shop here. But suspecting bad alternator. And that was my own stupidity for freaking uh, my own stupidity that I wasted the time. Um, just going straight after to see if it was locked up, but uh, expecting that a customer knew what they was talking about, you know, that'll that'll burn you. <laughs> but I uh <laughs> thank you. Anyways, I'll get it in here and see what's going on. Looks pretty good though. But definitely not locked up. alternator is putting out and it's starting to stumble a little bit right, right now oh look at it dropping out I shut my head out on So yeah, it's charging part of the time. The old needle's just a dancing. And we got the alternator right there. Nothing changing, wiggle on the wires. So, I mean, it's charging some of the time. So we know, and our belt's on good. We know we have uh, everything we need electrically to make it charge. I would like to make sure we got a good constant on that main battery power, but it's just, it's going to just be an alternator. What's going to be? 
Alright, hold it up about 2,000. Oh wow, alright. Yeah, that needle's going up over 16 when you do that. So I'm definitely calling it a bad alternator. Alright, just doing a code scan. P1521, incorrect engine oil type. Voltage codes, voltage codes. Lots of communication with audio amplifier stored. Vehicle line mismatch stored. Battery codes. Unidentified key communication error stored. Okay. Hmm. OBD2 permanent air intake. I know I had that unhooked. Throttle position switch D circuit low and high. I don't think I unhooked anything to cause that, but that's in permanent. Nothing in regular OBD. Alright, well I don't see nothing with the charging system. Alright, so with my jump box, oh there it just went down one. I don't know if I caught it. Alright. I was thinking just the battery. But It's warranty company also. Definitely uh, calling it the ultimate.